everyone, and thank you for joining us today, New Hope Radio. Thursday afternoon edition, got some good stuff on hand for you today. Oh, man. This message today is for everybody. Everybody. If you were born, this message is for you, and you'll know why in a couple of minutes. So uh, thank you for tuning in, whether you're listening to WARV 1590 on the AM dial, or streaming us online at WARV.net, or maybe you're watching the program at NewHopeCC.tv. Click Facebook, and we are there. If you're on Facebook, join the chat. We're going to have a great time today in the chat room. Aaron is there to meet you and greet you and say some good things to you. So join the chat, and we're going to have a great time studying God's Word today. Boy, I'll tell you what. There is a very legitimate question today that, unfortunately, most people don't bother to ask. I can think of a couple of reasons why they might not ask this question. Number one, they don't care. They don't care about the answer. It's one reason. The other reason could be they don't want to know. They don't want to know. Ignorance is bliss, they say. It's like, I don't want to know. But th this is like, this is the most important question in life. There is no question more important than this question. That's why you can't hide from it. You can't be ignorant of this question answer. Because you know what the question is? Here it comes. Where do you go when you die? Pfft, that's big. That's big. Where, where, where do you go when you die? You know why that's so big? Everybody dies. And everybody's going somewhere. Yeah, we're all going to die. And we're all going to go somewhere. And we need to know where we are going. Okay? That's why this question is so important. So, in order to answer this question, we're going to take an in-depth look into what is known as the underworld. Did you ever study the underworld? There is an underworld, and we're going to take a look at that. We're in a series entitled, The Other World, The World of Spirits, and the underworld is what waits for all human beings, as well as spiritual beings. So we got some good stuff coming up, and I hope you can stay with me, not only today, but the next few days as well, okay? Because it's really important. When God created man, he did two things. Number one, he made him in his own image. We are made in the image of God. That doesn't mean we look like him. It means that we have attributes like God. We have morality. We have creativity. We have intelligence. We have emotion, okay? We're made in God's image. Secondly, when God created Adam, he breathed into him the breath of life, and man became a living being, a living soul. Now, the soul of man, because it has God's breath, is going to live forever. Yep, the soul is going to live forever. Okay, so here's the question. Where will it live? Where will each and every human being spend eternity? See, there are people who think, oh, they're going to spend eternity with the ground. Hey, in the ground. They can think that all they want. But the fact that you have a soul, and the soul has the breath of God in it, that means it's going to live forever somewhere. And that's why the gospel is so important. It helps our soul to spend eternity in a better place. Okay? Now, in Luke chapter 16, Jesus told a story. And it doesn't mean it's a parable. Usually parables are, they, they could happen, but they necessarily might not have. But no names are mentioned. In this story, names are mentioned. So it's like, hey, this probably really happened. And we have a description of the other world, as it was in Jesus' day. We have a description of the underworld. And uh, it's a story about a rich man and a poor man named Lazarus. Now, on the earth, you could say 
that they're both living in two different worlds, okay? One is wealthy and satisfied. The other one is poor and in need. And then they die. And then they get to the underworld. And in the underworld, the one that was poor and in need, he's filled and satisfied. And the one that was wealthy and satisfied, he's in tremendous need. Oh yeah. So, in this disembodied state, I'm going to just, you know, tell the story to you. In this disembodied state where the souls have gone on into eternity, we learn a few things. We learn that they can still hear, they can still see, they can still speak, they recognize each other, and they have great thirst. And you might be familiar with this story. There was a rich man, and the Bible says, I like it the way it says in the King James, he fared sumptuously every day. He had more than he needed, and he really lived it up. Outside his gate, right outside the gate, was a beggar. His name was Lazarus. He not only was, was poor, he wasn't healthy. And he had wounds, and the dogs would come, and they would lick his wounds. And the rich man, man, you know what? He would never give Lazarus anything to eat. Nothing. Not even the crumbs from his table. And then the Bible says that Lazarus died. He was carried off into Abraham's bosom, and the rich man died also. They both went to their graves, and they went into the underworld. Now, I've got a chart that I made here. You can't see it on the radio. You can't see it online, but you can see it on Facebook. I don't know if you can make it out. We're going to take a look at the bottom of that. See the bottom of that chart? It talks about the compartments of the underworld. Okay? Now, when they died, Lazarus went to paradise. Okay? The rich man went to torments. And between torments and paradise was a great gulf. Now, paradise and torments, together, they called Hades. H-A-D-E-S. Hades. And that simply means it's the underworld. Okay? But it's divided into two. Paradise, which is really nice, you know, maybe like a tropical island, right? Coconuts and pineapples and everything else. Torments, oh, that's not nice. Torments is a taste of hell. It's a place that's not good. That's where the rich man went. Lazarus went to paradise. Okay? And this great gulf separates the two. And that simply means that there's no possibility at all of one crossing over to the other. See, here's the thing. When you get into eternity, wherever you arrive, that's where you stay. That's where you are. That's your eternal home. There's no changing. There's no going back for a second chance. There's no, like, time that you put in, and then you can get out. No, man, that's it. That's your new zip code. And you're not going anywhere after that. That's why this is so important. Okay? So, in the underworld, we actually have three huge compartments. We have Hades, like we said, which consists of paradise and torment, separated by a great gulf. We have another place called Tartarus. You know who's in Tartarus? The fallen angels. Remember the angels that sinned with the women? They're in Tartarus. And then on the other side, we have the lake of fire. Oh, yeah, the lake of fire, man. It's empty right now. The lake of fire is hell. It's empty right now. But it's going to be filled up one day. And we'll get to that. Okay? So, Tartarus is its own holding tank. It's a place of utter darkness. And that's where the angels of light... See, angels are made of light. So, the angels that left their habitation in heaven, and they came down to earth, and they sinned with women, and they had children, God took them, and he put them in darkness, in Tartarus, until the judgment of the great white throne. And Peter reminds us about that. He said, God did not spare the angels when they sinned, but he cast them into hell, and committed them to pits of darkness, reserved 
for judgment. So that's where they are right now, and they're just waiting. They're sitting there in the dark, and they're waiting. And then Jude commented a little bit, and he said, These are the angels who did not keep their own domain, but abandoned their proper abode, in other words, the angelic realm. God has kept them in eternal bonds under darkness for the judgment of the great day. So he's agreeing with Peter that, yeah, man, these guys, they're like in a holding tank, in chains, total darkness, they're in the underworld. They'll get out, they'll go to the judgment of the great white throne, and then they'll be sentenced to the lake of fire. Man. And that's where they'll spend all of eternity. The devil and his angels, and sadly, all the Christ rejectors of human history. All the Christ rejectors of human history. They all have their part in the very same place. And unfortunately, that is an eternal abode. It's eternal. Never changes. Ever. Once we step into eternity, where we are is where we stay. We ain't getting out. Jesus talked in Matthew chapter 25 about the judgment of man. He said, he will say to those on his left, depart from me accursed ones, into the eternal fire, which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. See, hell wasn't prepared for man. It's prepared for the devil and his angels. But there's no place for man who's unregenerate to go. So he can only take part in the lake of fire. Regenerate man, because of faith in Christ, has a righteousness that brings him into God's abode, into heaven. Okay? So we've got, in the underworld, unbelievers are in torments, fallen angels are in Tartarus, believers are in heaven. And by the way, when Jesus died, and the Bible says he went to Hades, he took paradise, and he released it from Hades. Paradise was filled with Old Testament believers and he brought them all to heaven. So that's why now, when believers die, they go straight to heaven. They don't go to paradise. They don't go to a holding tank. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about the belief in purgatory. A lot of people believe in purgatory and what goes on there. But I'm going to show you tomorrow that, that the belief in purgatory, well, it's really not accurate because... Jesus took paradise to heaven, and when we as believers die, we go straight, the Bible tells us, I like that part, to be with the Lord. That's our assurance. Isn't it good to know that if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, that when you die, no matter when you die, or how you die, or where you die, that boom, in a moment, you'll be with the Lord Jesus. You'll be in a perfect place. It's going to be like, incredible. And you don't have to worry about anything else. Hey, there's a lot of stuff to worry about down here on earth. But you know what? You don't have to worry about your eternal abode once you put your faith in Jesus Christ. So, let's talk about that word, hell. Where do we get the word hell? Okay? Some people say, oh man, I'm living in hell right now. Well, no, you're not. Don't you worry. You'll know it when you get there. Where did the word come from? Well, on the south side of Jerusalem was the Valley of Hinnom. And at a high place in the valley in the Old Testament, you know what happened? Parents offered their children through fire to the pagan god Molech. And that fire was kindled with sulfur. That they were involved with child sacrifice. And they threw, they threw their babies into the fire. Now later, this place became a place for the burning of garbage from the city of Jerusalem. It became a dumping ground, a landfill. And the fires, you know, they burned perpetually. And the decaying matter as yet 
unconsumed bread worms. So picture everybody's seen a dumping ground, right? And smoke and fire and the pot that wasn't burned yet, worms would live there. And Jesus took this valley called Gehenna and he used it as a symbol of hell or the lake of fire where he said, man, in hell the worm does not die, nor does the fire. And what is he saying is, it's eternal. The fires of hell will never burn out. The fires of hell will burn forever and ever and ever and ever. They'll never burn out. That's why you don't want to go there. No one goes to hell for a period of purification and then they get out. No one gets out. No one leaves. Just like heaven, no one leaves. Wherever you are eternally, that's where you stay eternally. And that's why it's so important, number one, if you're going to share your faith, live your faith. If you want people to listen to you and listen to the Christian message, then live the Christian life. If you're hip hypocritical or if you're not real, your message means nothing. If you want your words to be weighty, you've got to live the life. Okay? So, other people's souls are at stake. When you think about your commitment to Christ, your commitment to Christ can affect other people, and they're receiving the gospel from you. So, I want to talk about, a little bit, the judgment seat of Christ. And what is the judgment seat of Christ? This is where all believers in Jesus Christ will stand one day. That if you're a believer in Christ, you will be at this judgment seat. Okay? First of all, Paul said, No man can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. He's saying, this is where it begins. What's the foundation? The foundation is Christ. You've got to be born anew, born from above. He's talking about salvation. Your relationship with God begins at the moment of salvation. What's salvation? When I put my faith in Christ as my Savior. I acknowledge I can't get to heaven apart from Him. Not through good works, not through religion, not through anything I can do. It's only through faith in Him. That's the foundation. Okay? Then secondly, then he said, now once you're saved, if any man builds upon the foundation, you will build with good with gold, silver, precious stones, or with wood, hay, and straw. What's he saying there? He's saying that these are the rewards that we get for the works of service that we do. You can get gold, silver, precious stones, or wood, hay, and straw. Now, obviously, the wood, hay, and straw, that doesn't sound like the best uh, reward, does it? I don't think so. You believe my phone's ringing? Okay. My phone was ringing. <laughs> okay. Back on Facebook. So, he's saying, okay, so through your life as a Christian, you're earning gold, silver, gems, gold, silver, precious gems, wood, hay, and straw. And we all get them. We get the gold, silver, precious gems because we're filled with the Spirit. We're in the will of God. Our motives are right. We get the wood, hay, and straw because maybe we're operating in the flesh. Maybe our motives aren't right. Maybe we have our own agenda. We're not filled with the Spirit. And then Paul said, each man's work will become evident. In other words, it's going to be revealed what our motives were. The day will show it because it will be revealed with fire. It seems like all the rewards will be thrown into a big pot of fire. And whatever's left, that's what we get. So the wood, the hay, and the straw will all be consumed. Be nothing left but ashes. But the gold and the silver and the precious gems, pff, they're non-combustible. They will survive the fire. And those will be your rewards. So the intention is, okay, I want to live a life in such a way 
that I earn more gold, silver, and precious gems than I do wood, hay, and straw. They have something to show for your Christian life. He said, if any man's work which he's built upon it remains, he shall receive a reward. And that's the reward, the gold, the silver. And he said, well, why do I want that? It's not that we need gold, silver, and precious stones in heaven. You know why? There's no stores that I know of anyway. But you know what they are? Here, here it comes now. It's symbols of your faith. How about this? Symbols of your, oh boy, faithfulness. We will finally realize the degree of people's faithfulness by the rewards that they receive. If they get a lot of ashes when it's all said and done, it'll be like, oh, hey, maybe they look pretty good on planet Earth, but the ashes reveal, uh, they weren't that faithful to God. And then you might see somebody that they get the gold, the silver, the precious gems, and you say, wow, and all I, I saw them struggle all the time. They were always struggling. But they were faithful. See, that's the key. They were faithful, oh, here it comes, in their struggles. It's all about being faithful to God. God is looking for faithfulness. Faithfulness pleases God. Faithfulness will receive gold, silver, and precious stones. So, salvation is our opportunity. Works is our purpose that follows salvation. The judgment will be our evaluation. That's an eternity future. And then the rewards are our destiny. So you see, we're all going somewhere. So there is a track for every person. Every person has a track that we're following. The believer follows the track of salvation, of service, evaluation, and destiny. The unbeliever has a track of what? Torments, the judgment of the great white throne, and the lake of fire. That's it. When they're judged at the great white throne, they'll be judged according to their works, and all their works will be found wanting. You know why? They are void of the righteousness of Christ. They might have been very good people on planet Earth, but they were void of the perfect righteousness of Christ that gets them into heaven. See, good doesn't get you into heaven. Mm -mm. Perfection gets you into heaven. And none of us can be perfect on our own. And that's why we receive Christ as our Savior. And we receive his perfection. And now we're qualified to live where God lives. We can live in a perfect place because God has made us perfect through his Son. So, how can you benefit from this teaching? It's like, okay, what's he talking about? That's what you could be thinking. What is he talking about now? What's he rambling on? Here's what I'm talking about. Number one. Realize that you will live forever somewhere. you got to realize that. I don't care if you're a Christian or a non-Christian. Pagan or believer or Hindu or Muslim or Catholic or Baptist or Pentecost. It does, you're going to live forever somewhere. Okay? That's number one. Number two. Take this information to heart. It's the Word of God. It's the Word of God. It tells us what waits for us, and it tells us how to get to the right place. What to do to make the right choice to get to the right place. So there's no excuse. And then thirdly, get on that track. That leads to heaven. Get on that track. 
And what is that track? That track is a train named Jesus. I hear a train are coming. That train's are coming. And you're going to get on board. And that train is called the Lord Jesus Christ. Get on board. You know why? That train is heaven bound. It's the only one. There's no other train that's heaven bound except the one called the Lord Jesus Christ. All the other trains, religion, church, Islam, Buddhism, you name it. I don't want to start picking religions, but that's all they are. Religions, that's all they are. They're empty and they're vain and they're void and they have nothing to offer. It's the truth. Atheism has nothing to offer. Believe me, it's got nothing to offer. All those trains are on their way to the lake of fire. There's the information. There it is. Tomorrow we're going to come back and talk about purgatory. Let me give you my chart one more time. Take a look. If you want the chart, I'll mail it to you or email it to you. Send your email. Email us here at the church. New Hope CC. I don't know what it is. You can find it. It's on the website somewhere. And I'll email you my chart. And you'll have it to study. Tomorrow, the belief in purgatory. The belief in purgatory. How important that one's going to be. And then next Wednesday. Oh, don't miss Wednesday. August 2nd, we're going to begin a brand new series. Live in the church, Wednesday nights. We're going to walk with Jesus through the Gospel of Mark. We're only going to study the words in red. Like if Jesus were talking to you, and all you heard were the words in red, what would he be saying? That's what we're going to study. That is going to, it's going to be such a cool study. Never did anything like this before. I don't even know where I'm going with it. I might be like, I don't know, biting off more than I can chew, but we're going to go for it anyway, and we're going to see what happens. Thank you for coming along today. Hit like, hit share, and I'll see you tomorrow for more of New Hope Radio.